Hello, my name is Paul and this is Bob. Um, Bob is here today because he's had a history of shoulder problems uh, about a month or so ago. I started to develop a, a lot of burning in the shoulder and a lot of dysfunction. I thought this would be a, a great time to talk about the different reasons why people have loss of external rotation strength in the shoulder. And there are many reasons why that happens. So when you evaluate a patient, it's important that you take into consideration their age, the mechanism of injury, and some of the symptoms that come along with their lack of external rotation. Um, and so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, a tear of the rotator cuff. Now, I'm going to demonstrate some of his manual muscle testing and uh, we'll just kind of take a look at that first and then I'll talk about some of the reasons why um, we diagnosed him with, with what he has. So I'm going to ask him to hold his arm right here and don't let me push it down. So he has pretty good flexion, good resistance. We're going to bring him into abduction. Hold here. Nice abduction. We're going to bring his arm down by his side. We're going to have him bring his hand in toward his belly and hold it right there. Don't let me pull it out. Excellent resistance there. Now I'm going to have him bring his arm out here and I want you to hold it there for me and give me some resistance. And he doesn't really have anything. Now, how painful is that? Well, it's, I feel some. You feel some pain, but it's not excruciating yeah. pain. No. Okay. No. And just sitting here, you don't have a lot of pain in your shoulder. No. Okay. So, one thing he could have is a torn rotator cuff. Infraspinatus and teres minor are the external rotators of the arm. Generally, they're a lot more painful than that and will offer a cogging type of resistance when you push on them. But when you push on Bob, watch this. It gives out very smoothly, okay, and that's more neurological in nature. So the next thing we should think about is, does he have maybe shingles affecting the nerve root and, and the uh, suprascapular nerve that goes to the rotator cuff causing this? So when we took his shirt off, we didn't see any pustules, he hasn't had any symptoms of shingles. Um, the other thing he could have is a herniated disc, C5, C6. We checked his reflexes and they were all fine. His sensation is fine and his distal muscle strength down here, biceps, triceps, um, and wrist extension are all fine. So that indicates to me that this is not a cervical spine problem. He could have a greater tubercle fracture because his external rotator is attached to his um, greater tubercle, but he didn't really have a mechanism of injury and so that shouldn't be a factor. The other thing is that, let that arm relax, is that when we resist him, um, a greater tubercle fracture would be extremely painful. Uh, another neurological condition he could have is Parsonage-Turner syndrome. The interesting thing with that is that he would have a severe amount of pain for about one to two weeks and it's intractable. Okay, you'd have pain all day, all night, take medication, doesn't seem to help. And then after two weeks, the pain goes away and you have severe weakness in the arm. And generally, you would lose flexion, external rotation, and abduction also. But in Bob's case here, interestingly enough, after having had an x-ray and MRI, it identified that he had a grade 3 arthritis in the shoulder with a paralabral cyst. And the cyst was large enough that it was pushing on his suprascapular nerve. And as a result, is compressing the nerve that um, stimulates the uh, external rotators of the arm, simulating a rotator cuff tear. So MRI shows that he has a, a good rotator cuff, no tearing. He has a small labral tear, but the paralabral cyst is pushing on the suprascapular nerve. So um, he just recently had that aspirated. He actually is demonstrating better strength uh, today than he did the last time I tested him. And hopefully uh, the nerve will recover and his rotator cuff will start to function better. Um, if that doesn't improve and pain continues to be a problem and function continues to be a problem, he's probably going to be a candidate for a total shoulder replacement um, because he has a, a grade 3 glenohumeral arthritis that is uh, pretty severe. Um, thanks.